Hello, and welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thank you very much for tuning in and joining me and hopefully enjoying my exploration of the wide world of pens. And yes, I'm going to buy no new pens. Been there before, but who knows how long this one will last. I've discussed the fact that I have many, many pens, thousands, that I've collected over the years when they were very inexpensive. And you can go to a flea market, rummage sale, whatever, antique store, and find very good fountain pens for very low prices. So in my collection is this red box with no labeling on it. So I decided to open it up. And inside we see two pens based on a Parker Dualfold Big Red design. Yes, uh, there was a lot of mimicking going on throughout the entire history of the manufacturing of fountain pens. We see different names on these. One's a Howard, and one's an As Stop with a patent date on it. We go to the clip, and we'll see that they've also put the name on the clip, which is common. Might be good to put it in the right orientation so you can see it. So I wouldn't call these high-end pens. But the fact that they're both in this box, and as we unscrew the cap, which has a little bit of resistance and noise, we'll see very, very crusty, well-used pens. At least uh, they probably had ink in when they were last used. Who knows how many decades ago. Could have been a century that they were used. Classic sections that are very common with these pens, including the original dual fold that they mimicked. But when I went further into the box, I found this interesting label. Ten dollars is a huge amount of money for this pen, so I think it places it more in the 30s. Certificate of guarantee, very old, I'm not going to unfold it. Here's a picture of it completely unfolded. If we flip it over, we'll see a reference to the New York Fountain Pen and Novelty Company, which I can find in no reference in my searches and made by the Howard Fountain Pens, and find no reference to that either. There's a Howard Hunt that's around in the fountain pen community, but that's not related to the Howard pen we have here. So I'm going to go through my classic restorations, because I think these pens have some interesting value to them to me as a collector and as a writer. Stay tuned. So after soaking for a few days in this soapy water solution, yeah, a lot of that ink came off. So I took my rubber band, put it on the section, did a little tug, and on the Howard, the section was easily removed. You saw how much it was stuck when I first got these pens. And also all that ink has come off where it was saturated there and the threads in the barrel. But unfortunately, the J-bar has not survived. It's very corroded. The metal is very brittle, but I have J-bars to replace that with. And also, fortunately, the Aster also came apart easily. Again, a little bit of a soak. Threads are nice and clean. The snib didn't clean up as well, but, you know, we have other things that we're going to try. Not certain it's a four, even though it says 14 on it, K, I think it's gold plate. And it's a steel nib, unlike the 14K nib on the Howard. But I'll clean these up. There's a little bit of the sack still left inside the barrel. We'll take care of that. You know, it comes off the section here very easily. So that's the first stage, and the most important stage, to restoring a sack lever fill vintage pen. I'm glad these came apart easily after some soaking. So this is the ink I picked out, writer's blood, uh, for some reason I thought it would be appropriate. I was concerned that the pen wouldn't fit because these bottles have narrow openings, but I was correct. It won't fit in there. So off to another ink. So now I got a bottle with a bigger opening. 
Yes, it's a Birmingham Pen Company, Inc. Point Park Fountain Turquoise. And this has a good opening in it. So for those of you that have never filled a pen that has a bladder in it with a lever, you insert it like you would with most pens with halfway up the section. You pull the lever out. And then you let it go back in. And it should pull up some ink. Yes, we're going to have to wipe it off. I'm going to weigh it, because I weighed it before I put ink in, to see how much ink we actually got. Right, here's the ink on a paper towel after I wiped off the section. It's a dark turquoise. Kind of dusty is a word that describes some of these early Birmingham inks. Well, this nib certainly does not disappoint. It's very soft. Feels great on the paper. Lays down a wet line. I like it. It exceeds my expectations. Classic vintage pen. And I put 1.2 milliliters of ink in it based on weight. So that's a decent amount, but the way this thing puts down ink, probably get three four pages out of it at most so hope you've enjoyed watching this pen right now stay tuned to see how i got to this point so what do i really like about these two pens is i consider them barn finds that's referred to a car that's been sitting in a barn since it was last driven many decades ago so i'm the first person to work on these pens to look at these pens to try to get them to write could be as long as a century. And the fact that they're in decent shape, they're not aesthetically the most pleasing things to look at, but that's an easy thing to fix in my mind. Getting them functionally working as writing instruments, that's the pleasure, and I enjoy doing that. And hopefully you enjoy watching me explore these pens and getting them to write after many, many decades. So part of any restoration work, repair work, or any type of mechanical activity, you need tools. And this is a knockout block, which I think is pretty much needed to knock out that nib and feed out of the section. They generally don't pull out, even though you may soak them and everything else. Yeah, this cost me, I think, $20. I could have made one. But then you need to get these metal rods, you need to get this metal strip, drill holes in it, etc., etc. So I felt purchasing one was a better solution. They also use a bottle brush like this. I have many of them in different sizes to clean out the insides of caps and barrels. I used to use an X-Acto knife, but I went to a scalpel. These are those ones that are very inexpensive. They have replaceable blades. I have enough blades to last me for as long as I need. And the other thing is I made a collection of dental tools that have all different ends to them. And these ends are great for scraping and cleaning out the inside of the barrel, etc., etc. So have tools that you need or improvise, but just think about what you're trying to do with the pen and how you can accomplish it and do no harm, as Wesky would say. So a lot of viewers ask for a complete demonstration, which I generally don't do. So here's that metal rod. You find one that fits well inside of that section. Then you take a hammer, gently tap, and you can see it comes out. And there is the feed and nib. 
ready for some serious cleaning. Nice channel in that feed. Small nib. Kind of what you'd expect in an inexpensive pen like this that had a gold nib. So we know the J-Bar needs replacing. Not functional the way it is there now. I said I had them, so here's one that I had. And it appears to be the right length. It's 62 millimeters. They come in a variety of lengths. Anderson Pens has them. Pen Tooling has them. I'll put some links to places to buy them if you're in uh, need of a J-Bar. So this one will slide into the barrel and make certain that we line it up with the lever. But that's something I'll do a little bit later. Here's the pen. Polished, wax. Yes, I wax my pens. A lot of controversy over it, but I've been doing it for almost 40 years and have no issues whatsoever. So I will continue to do it. This is a uh, Canuba wax with a little bit of uh, UV protecting in it, which I think is a good thing to have. And the wax also keeps moisture from the surface of the hard rubber, which is a good thing to do. I like the fact that the lever and the clip line up. I'm impressed. You know, it could be a lot of gold filled here, but it certainly cleaned up very well. And please, now we got to find a sack, put the pressure bar in before we can ink it up. We're in dark mode because I want to talk about these two holes which are in most vintage caps. Some people are concerned that it might lead to the nib drying out, but that's not the case. If you look inside the cap, we'll see that little insert there where the uh, section seals up against. And if you notice, those holes are below that. So when the pen is capped, those holes are not exposing the nib to air. But the theory behind it is when you uncap, you don't want to create a vacuum in there to pull ink out. Yes, the holes are nice and clean, and they will serve their function. Interesting. I like the color here. So I've inserted the new J-Bar. And as we see now, the lever springs back, stays in place. It's not loose. And if we look inside, we'll see how that J-bar is positioned there. I'm very happy with how it came out. So, let's find a nice sack to put in there. So I've reinserted the nib and feed into the section. They don't fit very deep, but I think it lined up very well. And I like the feed as close to that end of the nib as possible. As long as you don't see it when you look at it from the top. So I picked a number 19 sack. It goes in fairly easily. I'm certain a 20 could fit, but I only have two 20s and this doesn't warrant one of them. I'm saving them for my dorks. So the other thing is, is you need to get the proper length. So if we do this, I generally give it about an eighth of an inch of clearance. So we're going to cut right there. It's going to give us a nice sack for a fair amount of ink. So you may ask uh, where to get J-Bars. So I did my research. I used to buy them from Pendemonium, but unfortunately they're not selling now and they may or may not bring the store back. But you also have Pen Tooling, Anderson Pens, and other sources. There's a UK source that uh, also does a lot of vintage stuff. So they are available. And that's one of the good things that is nice about our hobby is as old as it is it's still in fairly good shape yes we may have some fewer resources but we still have enough resources to let us do what we'd like to do and as i did my research on this pen i didn't find very very much but you know that one makes us unique is this the only pen in existence if you know of another howard pen let me know I'd appreciate that. 
And if you think this pen is something you'd like to own, let me know that too. You never know what might happen. So here's the pen cleaned up. Some soap, some water, some elbow grease, some brushes, a little bit of ammonia here and there, but I don't soak any of the Captain Barrel and ammonia. I may use some ammonia solution with a brush to help clean out all that dried ink that was in this pen. You can see inside the cap, there's still a little bit left. It's not going to be perfect. I'm not one of those people that want to restore a vintage pen into perfect condition. It should look like it's age, as we all should. Some uh, wear on that cap band, but at least the cap band is there. Clip works nice springy nice ball in the end and I think this pen had the ink, ink problems for a while I cleaned out as much ink of those threads as I could you know probably when this pen was last used or whatever was put away full of black ink and that got all over but the fact that there was a lot of black ink at the top of the barrel here which I think was a result of posting because it does post nicely but it's all cleaned up well. So I think the ebonite that this pen is made from is uh, quite sturdy. Sections was easy to work with. Just basically got to get the ink off of it. And I scraped all the leftover sack that had stuck to it. The nib looks nice. It will be polished. Like a lot of these nibs, it wasn't polished on the reverse side. I'll clean that up a little bit more. And the feed is also in good shape. Nice deep channel there, reminiscent of a Waterman spoon feed. Some fins. Yeah, I think that'll provide a nice ink flow to the nib. I haven't checked the nib to see if it has any softness to it. It's okay. Typical of these 14 karat vintage nibs. So next time you'll see the pen, it'll be polished and waxed. We're ready for inking. Well, obviously, I'll put a sack on it, too. So one thing that's interesting, when you polish things up, you find details that escaped you before. Yeah, this band is 14 karat gold filled. Something I wouldn't have expected. You can see it polished up nicely, but there's still some traces left of where that gold fill may have worn away. It's much thicker than a gold plate. And the cap also cleaned up nice. Sorry, the clip also cleaned up nice. Maybe it's also gold filled. And I'd be surprised with a pen, this uh, third tier type of pen would use uh, that expensive material, but who knows? Competitive market back in the days when fountain pens were big things may have enticed certain people and companies to make things just to get their product into the hands of their customers. I certainly do enjoy these little details. So the pen is in ready condition, all cleaned up, polished, waxed, ready for another hundred years of use. So one of the things I noticed as I was working on the pen is these marks here at the finial at the end of the barrel. Someone probably thought this may be unscrewed and maybe thought it was like the Parker Dufold, a button filler. But it's not, it's a lever filler. That should have been obvious from the lever in the barrel. I think the sack is in good shape. It'll be there forever. And as you can see, it's a pretty good size. So we're gonna do our talcum, pure talc. Not baby powder or anything else like that. Just pure talc. Just like you would use pure silicone. It has a little bit over everything else, but that's okay. So I like to put it in so the nib is up there. I like that when I'm filling or expending some ink. And that section fits very nicely. Which is what you want. We're ready for inking. So you may ask, how does this Howard compare to the original? Well, this isn't the first Dufold Big Red because that had a solid band here. This has two bands, so it's a couple years later than the beginning of 29. 
but the color is very similar, very close. Finials, black finials top and bottom, but certainly not functional finials. They're glued in place or somehow secured. So just for snorts and giggles, I put in these two combos, also in a similar orange slash red ebonite. This one has a blue finial to top. Of course, both of these have pencils at the bottom. But as you can see, this is a popular color. You know, Waterman did the reds. I don't think Schaefer did any, but I could be mistaken. But it was a classic design, and back in those days, yeah, a lot of pens resembled each other like they do today. So the real big difference between the original dual fold on the top and the Howard version on the bottom is the nib size. Big Reds had big nibs. 14 karat gold nibs, but they were big. And these imitators, emulators, had smaller nibs. Part of that was a cost saving, so they could come in at under the price point that the dual fold was selling for. Interesting comparison. So we're coming to the conclusion of this video. As usual, here's some dimensions for you to review. So what do I think of this pen? Well, I'm impressed, primarily with the nib, but also how well it cleaned up and works. So a lot of, of my viewers have said they like vintage pen reviews, so I hope you comment on this video, and obviously you like it. Encourage me to do more. The cap comes off in... Yeah, two turns, which is nice because a lot of vintage pens, the threads get worn. So sometimes they come off in much shorter turns, but that's not the way they were designed. It's a little short in the hand. That section is a classic uh, vintage section. It's thick in diameter, but short in length. But it's okay. You can hold the threads. They're not sharp. A nice little flare out the bottom nose you're near the nib and that nib is a small nib so you're gonna you know probably hold it where those threads are at least that's what I will do and as we talked about and showed in the dimensions it does post it feels okay posted it actually feels a little bit better because that added weight of the cap kind of gives the pen you know 20 grams which to me is a nice weight in a pen but as you know I write unposted so that's it for this video. What happened to the second pen? Well, without the pressure bar, with that steel nib, I wasn't motivated to go any further. I just wanted to primarily show it in respect to this pen, which I have restored, and I'm very happy with the results. So let's do a final writing wrap-up and call it a day. I'd like to thank all of you for watching. I hope this video finds everyone safe, healthy, and happy. Enjoying your pens, be they modern, be they vintage. Just enjoy using them to deposit ink on some surface. So we've reached the end of this video. This is a phenomenal nib. I'm very impressed. And we will say bye. Oh, wow.